You've seen it on Facebook and you've seen it all over the internet. Banana peel fertilizer. This is the greatest thing for plants. And it's so easy to make. Why isn't everybody making this fertilizer? Is this really a good fertilizer? I'm going to answer that very quickly. And then I'm going to go on and discuss something that's really important for gardeners to understand. It'll help you better understand the composting process. It'll help you understand nutrients in soil. And it'll help you debunk myths like this. Is this a good fertilizer? You've seen lots of people say it is, but have you ever seen anyone tell you what the MPK of this is? Has anyone gone and analyzed the water from this and actually measured the nutrients in it? No, not one person that I've ever seen promote this knows what the nutrients are inside of it. Without knowing that, you don't know if it's a good fertilizer. And I can tell you that all this is is water. Uh, sure, it's a little yellow water, but that's it. There's virtually no nutrients in this. If you're using this on your plants and it's working, that's because your plants need water. That's all they're really getting from this. This is one of the silliest things I've seen on the internet in quite some time. Let's have a look at one of these banana peels. It looks pretty much the same as it did when I put it in the jar three or four days ago. That tells us something about this process. Think about what a banana peel is. These are plant cells, just like the cells in your body. Each cell has an outer coating, a cell membrane, and that holds all of the insides of the cell on the inside. That's its purpose. It holds things together. It gives this banana peel structure. Inside that cell is a whole bunch of organelles, things like the nucleus and the mitochondria. These are somewhat like our own organs, like our heart and our liver. Each of these has a specific function in the cell. Now, if we dig even deeper and go inside these organelles, we see all kinds of large molecules. We have large DNA molecules. Now, these are huge, huge molecules. But inside that DNA are phosphate molecules. And that's what the plants need, that phosphate. There are lots of proteins, both inside the organelles and inside the cell. Proteins can have 100,000 atoms in them. But what's important for plant nutrition is that protein have about 6% nitrogen. And that nitrogen is critical for plant growth. But here's the problem. Plants can't use protein molecules. They can't use these large DNA molecules. Plants can only use the nutrients once they're released from these large molecules. So what has to happen? Well, the first thing that has to happen is those cells have to be decomposed. That outer membrane has to disappear so the insides can spill out. But plants can't use that either. They have to wait until these large molecules are broken down into smaller and smaller and smaller molecules until that nitrogen is released as a nitrate molecule. That phosphate has to be released as a phosphate ion. It's only then that plants can use it. If you look at this banana peel, you can tell that these cells are still intact. Otherwise, it wouldn't look like a banana. If I put this in a compost pile, it takes months to decompose. And even when we can't see the banana anymore and it's finished compost, those nutrients are slowly released for another five years. This is a long, long process. Why is it that people think that two or three days in some water will do that? especially when this still looks like a banana peel. Still not convinced? Let me give you another example. What happens when you take a bath? If you sit in a hot bath for a while, do all your nutrients leak out of your body? Of course not. What happens when you go swimming all day at the beach? Are you concerned that by the end of the day, all your nutrients will be gone? Have you lost a lot of weight while you're swimming because all those nutrients have leached out? Of course not. And the reason is that all those nutrients are inside large molecules, which are inside cells. And those cells have protective membranes to keep it all together. The same thing happens with a banana peel. When you soak these for a few days, almost no decomposition takes place. Almost none of the nutrients are released in the water. That water is just water. 
Now granted, there are a few things that do come out, some coloring, so the water looks a little yellow. You might even have a little potassium in there, but we don't know. Nobody's ever tested this water. But you can be certain there are very few nutrients in here because it still looks like a banana peel. Now that you understand this process, or should I say a lack of process, you're better able to understand other myths. For instance, let's say we take some beans. We're going to cook them for dinner and we, we heat them up, boil them a little bit. And we take the beans out and eat them. How many nutrients do you think are in that vegetable water? Again, almost nothing. Same goes for pasta water. Sure, there's a bit of starch has gone into that water, but plants really don't need starch. In fact, they can't even use it until microbes break it down. Many of these DIY fertilizers are useless. They're basically water with almost nothing in them. Now, they're not going to harm your plants because your plants need water. And yes, there's a very, very low level of nutrients in there. But there is a problem with using this material. If you use it thinking that you're fertilizing your plants, you are harming your plants because plants do need nutrients. So use these things to water your plants, but not to fertilize your plants. Now, if you'd like to see some more garden myths, have a look at this video right here. It goes through 20 common garden myths, and I bet you believe a number of them. Most gardeners do. Happy gardening.